just get good. A common phrase said by overweight gamers, a sentence that implies that it's your fault and not the game's, but is this actually true? You see this? This is usually what you see when you open up a new game, a barrage of difficulties that are probably going to overwhelm you and put you into this familiar position. Easy mode, well, I don't want to be considered a pussy. I'm a Sigma gamer that goons on the occasion. Fine, let's do normal, but what if it's too easy? Hard and super hard, well, I don't want the game to take up all my free time and I have to repeat the same boss over and over and over. And What's actual good difficulty? Why is this bullshit and this isn't? Why is Sekiro praised for its difficulty and not Dark Souls 2? It's cause of frigid outskirts! <laughs> As you all know, I'm a professional gamer with my very own esports team called Team Mega Jelkers, and I noticed something while playing a couple games such as Valorant, Project Zombo, and Sekiro. These games are very, very hard. Assuming you've played them, you probably agree, but these three games are not difficult for the same reason, you see. Most games have different types of difficulties. Some are hard with their jumps, their shooting, their bosses, and many, many other things, but a lot of these games do not have good difficulties, which they try to remedy with player choice on how easy they want the game to be. Is this a definite way to fix the difficulty dilemma? A one-size-fits-all? A lot of people say yes, but I completely disagree. There's a shit ton of genres and they're all difficult in different ways, so why is it so important to have a good all-around difficulty? Difficulty is so much more important than people think. It's what makes a video game a video game. And without it, you're left with a movie where you occasionally click a button once in a while. You need that perfect blend, a roller coaster. Raise that difficulty and dive when you want to make the player feel powerful. A fun difficulty that doesn't insult your intelligence, and we all know gamers are nothing but the utmost intelligent creatures, so we need that. A perfect difficulty is kind of like Cinderella Cinderella's shoe, in the sense that when you're playing the game, it feels like everything was accounted for, where it feels like if they tried this on any other game, it wouldn't feel right. You're gonna want a game that perfectly fits that Cinderella's shoe of difficulty. Just like music, gameplay, story, and art style, game difficulty has its rightful throne right next to them, which is why it's even more important to not fuck it up. Balance is important, and the balance of difficulty is extremely hard to master. Making a game too hard will take you out of the experience. Let's take it back to the arcade games. Fair disclaimer, I was still in my dad's nutsack at this point, so take my perspective with a grain of salt if you will. Arcade games had one mode and it was the fuck you difficulty because what am I playing right now? Are you guys seeing this shit? What the fuck? I don't remember Pong being this difficult. Since their profit came from you siphoning your quarters into the machine, developers needed a fun gameplay loop that was also incredibly difficult so they can keep you at the machine feeding it shekels. Donkey Kong, Galaga, Pac-Man, these are all classic games that are meant to be incredibly hard so the player is stuck in that never ending loop. Take it a couple years later and now we're in the home consoles era and the games are still hard as fuck. And now that games are getting bigger and bigger and more expensive, they need to feel their worlds with more and more stuff so the players don't just blast through the games. Sprinkle in bullshit enemy placement, terrible level design, and these puzzles that require a sixth sense. What is this? As much as I love these games, they are riddled with filler and tainted with artificial game lengthener so the game can last longer than seven fucking nanoseconds. Plenty of gamers can just say skill issue, but old games are examples of bad difficulty, and this trend of bad difficulty kept on going until they realized that profit could six tuple if the difficulty was easier. Casual gamers needed to be the target market, and that's what Nintendo excelled at. The extreme challenge that plagued old games were slowly starting to fade. A vacuum in the market started to form, a thirst for difficulty and challenge was emerging, and these people weren't fed until later on. A situation that is common in many games are difficulty spikes, where the game somehow magically flips over and starts giving you back shots out of nowhere. One second you're in baby goo goo gaga mode and the next you're fighting fucking Satan. Perfect examples of Kumura from Persona 5. This guy was fine in the original P5, but let's play Persona 5 Royal real quick. Now that's not very fair, is it? I only beat this boss using the overpowered personas and switching over to easy mode. Consistency is incredibly important. You want the game to stay around the same level of difficulty so the player doesn't get fucking whiplash. Clearly the P5 devs didn't take this into consideration when making this bumbling fucktard of a boss and it shows. Let's do another example of bad difficulty real quick. For example, like The Witcher 3. Let's play this shit on evil demon bitch mode. Oh. So everything just has more health and you do less damage and the AI is the same. So modern game difficulty is just giving the enemy steroids and giving my character estrogen and soylent. How is this fun? You know, for being an all-powerful witcher, I'm doing very little damage to a level 1 goblin. So you really think you killed me with that clock of yours, huh, knight? How are you even alive right now, bro? Well, since I'm playing on easy mode, your clock left me with a couple HP. With all this bitching about how hard games are, maybe just lower the difficulty and play on easy mode like me. Bad difficulty wasn't just a staple in old games. It's not just subjected to it's too hard. Bad difficulty can also be easy in a chore. When a game is too easy, it can have the same effect as a game that is too hard. Let's take a look at Kirby. 
To be fair, it is a kid's game. But when you play a game that's too easy, it's incredibly boring and you will not remember any parts of the game. Game difficulty is the cornerstone of video games. If a game is too easy, it will not give you an experience that is memorable. Let's take a look at real life real quick. You do something easy like taking a shower. Bad example. You do something easy like pissing or eating a burger. You will forget this immediately. They're so minuscule and easy that your brain will literally delete it because it's taking up space. But your triumphs, your wins, your hard and difficult victories are the memories that stick with you. This is how you create memorable moments. If I'm just mindlessly splooging on enemies without a challenge, I'm inevitably going to get bored. But someone else might find it fun, which is why not every game is meant for everyone. It is impossible to make a game perfectly tailored to everyone's preferred difficulty. And the way that developers try to fix this is with a custom difficulty and this feature is in almost every game i fucking hate this shit night this is great giving power to the player i disagree it's just a quick patch lazier than actually fine tuning the game to perfection and like i said earlier it could overwhelm a new player trying to figure out the true intended experience of the game people have jobs night well yes of course but at that point why just subject your players to just easy normal and hard and give them more freedom with how they want to experience the game look at risk of rain and its customization i played this game on different settings from how much I was getting dicked down. Let the players modify the game to their liking, but that's how losers think. We need a definitive solution. I'm not here to regurgitate the same repeated opinions over and over. So how do we solve it? Now, if you just subject the player to just easy, normal, and hard, you're going to find a fuck ton of issues you didn't even know existed. Easy mode. <sighs> I'm playing normal mode right now, and this is what people usually play on because it's the most popular option. It's normal because that's the developer's vision of the game. See, that's what you would think, but that's a stupid fucking assumption. Normal mode isn't the vision of developers most of the time. Remember, games are a market, and the target market is, like I said before, casual gamers. Let's play hard mode. <laughs> game difficulty is a very tricky thing to work on, but leaving that up to the players is going to leave a lot of room for having a bad experience. You're going to want a game where everyone is on an even playing field where it's challenging but not frustrating but somehow still fun fuck you i'm not gonna glaze from software it's what you wanted a definitive difficulty fine tuned to perfection <sighs> All right, let's jump straight in. I'm not here to gobble Dark Souls meat like every other YouTuber on this site, but I'm gonna gobble the meat because I'm a fucking bitch. <laughs> but some of these games have truly come very close to perfecting difficulty. That's if you um ignore a lot of the bullshit these games throw at you, which is mostly concentrated in Dark Souls 2, so I think we're good. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I hated Dark Souls when I first played it. I got Dark Souls 3 as my first Souls like, and I played as the mercenary class. I fought this ice monster and died. I, I fought Goondir a couple hundred times and died. So I dropped the game for months until my fellow hoodlum called me up saying let's play dark souls 3 together now here's the deal the only way for me to play co-op with him was beating goondir so i have to fight goondir the guy i couldn't beat before the guy i died a bajillion times to and then finally something clicked and i beat him the feeling of victory washed over me this is the first time in a game I actually felt like I earned it. I overcame the challenge. I worked with and around the game. I used every tool in my arsenal and I came out a winner. This is how you do difficulty. If you're unemployed, that is. These games are incredible time sinks, especially Elden Ring. And I love these games, but God damn, half this time I've spent on this game is just me fucking dying. These games are not meant for everyone, and Elden Ring was the first entry in this long line of games where it tried to be that with its open world, and it worked. So many people played, but so many people dropped it, knowing it's not for them. These games are fine-tuned to have immense difficulty, but also be fair at the same time mostly. You didn't lose because the game was broken. You lost because you didn't dodge the attack that was coming at you. You didn't lose that 2v1 because it's bullshit. You lost because you didn't use all the tools in your arsenal. You didn't lose because of the chest that's secretly a monster that eats you. You lost because you didn't analyze the mahogany brown wood in 4k. Souls like games whole selling point is its difficulty. These games would be good in their own right but it would have never won game of the year if every boss was just kind of eh. It wouldn't have a cult following if the games were just kind of hard. The first thing everyone thinks of when they hear Dark Souls is very, very, very hard, and probably that one swamp level from Dark Souls 3. What the fuck? From software, I should just really just add an easy mode. This is the director's vision. The difficulty they hand tailored is the definitive experience. Adding an easy mode completely rips the soul out of Dark Souls. Adding this feature could remove a key aspect of what makes the games so popular. From Software deserves the respect they get for keeping it this way because they could hypothetically reach a bigger market, but they know what they want and how the game is supposed to feel. Less is more in this situation. The less options they give, the more the experience can be refined to their liking, even if that means cutting off a big market to the game. So no!
Alright! What's your solution to all of this? Just let me cook. I need one more section before I give my solution. Online difficulty is very interesting. First thing I want to specify what I mean by online is player versus player. No AI, just gutting people down in real time. See, PvP difficulty is close to impossible to perfect. Developers can never predict human behavior and how tricky we are as people. In online games, you're fighting against real players, which puts things into perspective when you realize there's real living human beings that play League of Legends. Anyways, game developers have to take into account the enjoyability of the game and having to make every system valid to play with. Guns and characters need balancing. Uh-oh, someone just put monolithic suppressor on Trundle. Rebalance. The E-couple in the bottom lane just discovered a broken build that they can use to absolutely wipe house and ruin the game. Rebalance. New character came out for some reason that has 45 different fucking flashes. Rebalanced. The most balanced games are the ones that everyone is on an even playing field, like CSGO. No one has the upper hand and it all comes down to skill, but then that gets stale after a while, so the solution to that was special characters. Overwatch, League of Legends, Rainbow Six Siege. For majority of these games' histories, it's been pretty fucking stupid. Do you guys remember when Blackbeard Shield was borderline unbreakable? This shit was empowered and blessed by every single god imaginable. This motherfucker could go to any war in the Middle East and leave unscathed. How did this get past playtesting? Legends say that they had lots of weed in the office that day. This showcases how giving the player more freedom and more choices gets messy. Look at Overwatch with Brigida. I literally alt have forward after getting killed by her the same day she was added. That brings the question, should we nerf the broken characters or should we buff the non-broken characters? And I'm of the opinion of just making everyone broken to a certain extent. R6 is boring as fuck now because they made the game too tame. And no, I'm not implying we should bring back Blackbeard's God Shield, but every character has abilities, right? So make the game fun and make everyone's abilities incredibly strong. Make it their trump card and let them clean house. Online difficulty is a lot different than story difficulty. A lot of people just want to turn off their brains and just play some COD. Some people want to take a tactical route and play Siege, if you want to call this tactical. Online difficulty is hard to perfect but easy to tune. You have millions of players and they give feedback all the time on the game. And usually people agree on the same thing. For games with stories, you're going to have more groups of people split on opinions and it's hard to decide what direction to take. So what's the solution to good difficulty? What is the end-all be-all solution so games can have a perfect difficulty? Video game difficulty can be broken down into multiple areas. Damage, movement, and AI. There's probably a lot more, but I'm just going to simplify it down to these three. When I talk about damage, I think of the power of the enemies and the player. Games throughout history usually make you as frail as a make-a-wish child in the beginning. And as you progress through the stepping stones that they set out, you usually end up with a fun, balanced game where it isn't too easy and it isn't too hard. But there's also two other paths that they could take. Making the game too easy where I'm literally killing all these bitches in one shot and now I'm bored as fuck. Or they make a game too hard and I want to gun down my local library with my hoodlum Glock. Now, you're going to be real hornswoggled when I tell you all of these paths are valid in the making of an enjoyable game. A game's movement system could be the entire game's difficulty on its own. You don't need enemies, attacks, power-ups, if you just build your game around how the character moves around the world. I don't know why I'm trying to make this sound deeper than it actually is. This is just called a platforming game. Celeste and Super Meat Boy are incredible with the goal they set out. They hand-tailor the difficulty in the levels. It's hard yet rewarding. The jumps are precise and satisfying. If you're aiming to make a difficult platformer, you have to make the world hard, not the movement. You have to make the player feel in control at all times to make a platformer like this work. There's no easy mode in any of these games, besides Celeste assist mode. So there's a customizable difficulty in Celeste! Stop contradicting yourself! How are you alive?! Okay, I do admit, Mr. Cigar does bring up a good point. You can customize the difficulty in Celeste with the assist mode. So you're saying more developers should give power to the player so they handcraft their own experience? Eh, not quite. Let me finish my final point. AI is, in my opinion, the most important factor in difficulty. Almost every game ever made relies on AI for challenge. If your AI sucks, then what the fuck are your players going to be fighting against. AI is ever expanding, becoming more and more dynamic, but then this also leaves room for more error. You need an AI to be smart, to make the world feel alive, but if you want your game to be challenging, you might have to sacrifice some of that immersiveness to reach that goal. A lot of games have completely brain dead AI, which in turn makes the game less difficult and in turn less fun. Not necessarily, but sometimes the AI is brain dead on purpose for fun gameplay. So how can we tie these two things together? This is the hardest thing to solve. How can we make a game a perfect difficulty and also make it fun? What's the point of playing any game if you're just gonna log on and get your ass rolled by 45 goblins? Look at this chart that I stole off Google Images. Frustrating, hardcore fun, challenging fun, balanced fun, casual fun, mindless fun, and boring. Ideally, you want challenging fun, but then there's also gonna be a market for mindless fun. Now, this is clearly a dilemma. Nerd! Just give up! Difficulty is fine as it is. The modern gaming market is perfect. You will never find a solution to your dilemma! 
depending on what feeling you're going for in your game, all of these are perfect. Besides boring, nothing is worse than a boring game, obviously. So my trump card to how to make a perfect difficulty is, um... I don't, I don't really know. There's so many variables and so many things to take into consideration when making a game. There's patchworks to this, as I said before, to remove player choice and hand tailoring it to perfection, but then that would also cut a large market off from your game. And at the same time, there's game genres that need those options and difficulty. Masochist gamers looking for extreme challenge don't want to be limited to fucking drizzle mode. Everyone wants different levels of difficulties and experiences, and some people have to realize when a game just isn't meant for them. But on the other side of the coin, these groups of gamers don't want to be left out on a beautiful experience just because they suck at games and have responsibilities to attend to. We as people are too different. There will never be a perfect difficulty. Video games have to be made accounting people's taste. In an ideal world, each and every one of us could play Dark Souls in hard video games, but some of us have to be left behind when making a game because if a game is made for everyone, then they end up making a game for no one. So what you're saying is, is that there should be an unemployment difficulty and an employed difficulty. Persona!